Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Welcome to today's message from Harvest Chapel International. We believe the message will be a blessing to you as you imbibe God's truth. God bless you. Vitalize us and grant us to know that because you've started this month with us, you will also end it with us. In the name of Jesus Christ, put your hands together for the Lord, somebody. Give the Lord a very big shout of victory. Give him a September shout. 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 Give him a shout of victory. Give him a shout of praise. Give him a shout of power. Give him a shout of gratitude. He deserves all our praise. When we look in the book of Zephaniah, Zephaniah in chapter 3, from verse 15, but let's focus maybe on verse 17. Zephaniah is in the Old Testament, chapter 3. Verse, let's look at verse 15. Let's speak from verse 15. Let me encourage somebody this morning. The Lord has taken away your judgments. He has cast away your enemy. The king of Israel, even the Lord, he is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. I prophesy into the month of September. I declare that you will not see evil anymore. Let me hear somebody shout yes. Because the Lord is in the midst of us. And he says, do not fear. And he said that in that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, fear thou not. That day is today. And to Zion, let not your hands be slack. I prophesy that in this month, anything that you put your hands to do, it will work out well. You will be diligent. You will be strong. You will be fruitful. You will be abundant. There will be profit. There will be increase. There will be multiplication. He says that fear thou not. And to Zion, let your hands not be slack. This month, you will get a big harvest. Hallelujah. This month, everything that you conceive from January, in the month of September, you will give birth. It will come to pass. And then in verse 17, I love this one. And I declare it to you this morning. That the Lord your God, in the midst of you, he is mighty. I declare that the Lord your God, in the midst of you, is mighty let me hear everybody shout mighty mighty mighty, mighty. mighty. and because he's mighty he will save and he will save to the uttermost no one will be lost no one will be left by the roadside no one will drown all of us will come to save harbor let me hear somebody shout yes. yes he will not only save he will also rejoice over you with joy somebody say i believe this month you will sing songs of joy songs of praise songs of adoration songs of exaltation songs of magnification he will rejoice over you with joy and then he said he will rest in his love you are god's love you are his portion he will rest in you and verse says that he will calm you in his love in this month jehovah will calm you in the midst of the storm he will calm you in the midst of any kind of attack of the enemy he will calm you and then he said he will joy over you with singing somebody puts your hands together make a joyful noise make a joyful noise 
Make a joyful noise. 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 Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. In this month, you will bring testimonies. In this month, God will give you an overtaking and an accelerating spirit. In this month, loss will turn to profit. Darkness will turn to light. In this month, your head will be lifted up. Your hands will be strong. In this month, they will be open new doors for you. And there will be effectual doors. There will be doors of favor. There will be doors of increase. There will be doors of profit. In this month, your song will change. Instead of a dirge, you will sing a song of praise. In this month, you will give the Lord a new dance. You will say that God has indeed visited his people. In this month, your family will be kept together. In this month, your life will experience a transformation. In this month, you will receive that job. In this month, you will travel on that journey. In this month, that sickness will disappear. That ailment will disappear. In this month, you will experience liberty. You will experience deliverance. Because God is with you. In this month, Jehovah will be your refuge. He will be your fortress. He will be your covering. He will be a shield around you. In this month, He will change your story. In this month, He will lead you to green pastures. In this month, you will take you by the calm waters. In this month, he will lift you up. In this month, you will know that God is God. Put your hands together for the Lord. Give him a shout. You want to take your seats for a few moments. I thank God so much that we have entered the ninth month. The month of completion. The month of wholeness. And I am looking forward to hearing great and wonderful testimonies about all that God is doing. I believe that he has already begun it. And you are next in line for that miracle. If you are the one, let me hear you shout yes. In this month, we are talking about how we can build strong families. And I want you to understand that this is very important because... The basic unit of every society is the family and the basic unit of every church is also the family so when we have strong families we'll have a strong society when we have strong families we'll have a strong church and building strong families does not come by default it takes deliberate action it takes a certain amount of grit and courage and the ability to win and the ability to overcome and the ability to get to the other side and so during the course of this month i believe that by the grace of god by the very various giftings that he has given to us in this church we will receive insight and revelation we will receive help so that we can build strong families so that the spirit of family problems and more functions and dysfunctions will cease hallelujah and sometimes the danger and the, sometimes the sad part of it is that a lot of these families that are breaking up, they call themselves Christians. We have the biological family, mother, father, children. But this month as we talk about building strong families, we want, we, we want, to, we want, to, we want to also reflect on the fact that every family finds its origin in God and so for us to build strong families we must all go back to the father of fathers to God himself hallelujah and we look in Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 8 the Bible tells us something it says but now O Lord thou art our father this morning I want to remind somebody that for us to be able to have any strong families we must first recognize God 
as our father i'm speaking about pillars of a strong family because every family for it to be strong it must be built on certain pillars <clears throat> so that when the storms of life come so that when there are winds of adversity that family will still be found standing and i speak by faith that in the course of this month may every dysfunctional family come together again may every separated family come together again may every barren and fruitless family become fruitful again may every family that is filled with sorrow let that sorrow be replaced with joy because now oh god you are our father as for us we are the clay but you are our potter and we all are the work of your hand may it be that families in this church and in the church of god will reflect the hand of god they'll reflect the beauty of God they'll reflect the goodness of God may it be that people will not point at us and say that they too they call themselves Christians and look at how dysfunctional their family is but it will take deliberate effort somebody has said that we need to move from having good intentions and a lot of people here have good intentions hallelujah hallelujah a lot of people have good intentions i would like to do this i would like to do that i would like to be in the choir so that when they are singing i play mama i can also sing some i like to play an instrument so that when they are playing i can also stand and show my skills i like to be an usher i like to be a prayer warrior i like to give in church i would like to marry I like to have children we have good intentions but we must move from good intentions to what we call intentional living that our living will reflect our intention so that we'll move from just a desire to actually planning and following through hallelujah maybe some of you when you are coming into church this morning you had a good intention that you call somebody but you didn't make the effort to pass by the person's place and actually bring the person to church may we not be the people who always you know uh, talk about things we are we are good commentators we talk about things after they have happened did you see that did you hear that did you read that and let us move to the place where we will make the news because we are living intentionally but now oh lord you are our father in psalm 65 and verse psalm 60 60 65 i think so go to psalm 65 and let's look there if it's not there we'll change it go ahead verse 2 verse 3 verse 4 verse 5 verse 6 verse 7 verse 8 so it's not in psalm 65 so we'll look at the other psalm hallelujah 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 so we'll make it psalm 68 human beings look any mistake you make god will make you correct it by the time they are laughing you are overtaking them verse 5 I, psalm 68 verse 5. the father of the fatherless and the judge of the widows is god in his holy habitation verse 6 god set the solitary in families if we are going to have strong families one pillar is that we must recognize 
the fatherhood of God. Hallelujah. And he is our father. And he sends his blessing through families. Genesis chapter 12 verse 3. When he was talking to Abraham and giving him that promise. And I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. And in thee shall all the families on the earth be what? Blessed. Hallelujah. So the family unit must be a place of blessing. It must be a place of increase. It must be a place that reflects the goodness of God. So we must recognize the fatherhood of God. That because God is the father, every family can work out well. And we must also recognize that we as children of God, we are part of God's family. The person sitting next to you is your brother, or your sister, or your father, or your mother, or your son, or your daughter. And we must carry out the correct relationships in the family so that the family will be an incubator or a reflection of the blessing of God. So any family that does not show for the blessing of God, there's something wrong with it. We must fix it. And when the body of Christ also does not reflect the blessing of God, we must fix what is happening. One important pillar for having a good family is that that family, it must be based on love and respect and acceptance of each other. First Peter chapter 3, verse 8, verse 9, verse 10. The Bible says that finally, finally, my beloved, be of one mind. When we are talking about the pillars of a strong family, let us be of one mind. We all want to build good families. Let me hear somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And he says that have compassion one of another. A pillar, that pillar of love, respect, and acceptance. How does it happen? Have compassion of one of another. Have compassion for each other. Have compassion. Don't be so wicked. Some fathers are so wicked to their children. And sometimes in the church, people are wicked to each other. Show compassion. Have a compassionate heart. Sometimes somebody can even be, be coming to church that it is raining. And you are seeing somebody who goes to your same church by the roadside. And you slow down. As soon as you get towards the person, then you press the accelerator. Have compassion. Compassion. We are members of the same family. Hallelujah. So when one suffers, all of us suffer. Let us have compassion for each other. It's an important pillar for a good family. We must be compassionate people. That means that people can do things for which they need compassion. Even if what they did was wrong, they need somebody to become compassionate. That is why from time to time, I like this song, Sweet Mother. I never go forget you. For this suffering, you suffer for me. When I did hunger, my mother go search for food for me. Let's have some mothers in the church. Let's have some fathers in the church. Let's have some compassionate people in the church. Hallelujah. And when you see somebody in a difficult situation, remember that he is part of your family. Hallelujah. Don't say that Nanke it, Sewa, it serves the person right. And when the person is in a high heel shoe and she's walking, and now our place is very nice. Some time ago, there used to be stones there. And the person slips. And she falls. People have fallen there. I have fallen on the plastic chair before. But I got up. Hallelujah. Some people laugh in their head. 
And some people also showed me compassion. But let's be compassionate. Hallelujah. And then it says, love as brethren. Hallelujah. Because as we speak about the family of God, the love we must have for each other should be brotherly love. Love as brothers and sisters. If you are not married to somebody, you cannot love as a married person. Let me come and say what you are saying. My young people. Hallelujah. You cannot be 18 years old, 19 years old. You have just entered level uh, 100. You don't even know whether you will finish the course. And then you are taking somebody's daughter. And you say, the way I love you, no. I got to marry you. Maybe how I tell Love as brethren. Somebody say, I hear you. Yeah. Love as brethren, as brothers and sisters. You are my brother, you are my sister. So let's remain brothers and sisters. There's time for everything. Now it's time for you to learn. Learn, my students. And then it says, be pitiful. Be pitiful. Let, let there be pity in your heart. Hallelujah. If you have food and you are eating it, and somebody passes by once, twice, three times, and the food is like a mountain before you, and in your mind you say that you this mountain before me you shall become a plain be pitiful show pity share something with somebody hallelujah share some love and care and then he says be courteous in the family let's be courteous it's an important pillar let's be courteous let's be respectful hallelujah in our families let's be respectful let's be courteous it's an important pillar love respect and acceptance and the bible also tells us and it is another important pillar for any good family let us learn to forgive one another hallelujah in the same first peter chapter 3 verse 11 you know all right Let's do verse 9. Let me just go through that. Don't render evil for evil or railing for railing. Because God says that vengeance is for him. But he says, instead, blessing. Knowing that this is what you have been called to, that you should inherit a blessing. For us to get that blessing, please don't render evil for evil. Hallelujah. When they do you evil, return it with good. Then he said, He that will love life and see good days let him refrain himself his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile sarcasm we are talking about the the reason why some people may not be coming to church is that you have spoken to them in a way that you shouldn't have spoken to them hallelujah you have made fun. people in every family they are different and they are sensitive to various things and that is why for us to have strong families, another important pillar, I said, is forgiveness. Let's learn to forgive one another. Because the closer you get to people, the higher the propensity to offend the people. Hallelujah. So when somebody offends you, that means that person is close to you. He is a member of the family of God or even in our own families there are siblings that are not talking to each other they are 70 years old 80 years old 65 years old 55 years old they are elders in churches they are deacons they are choir masters but they are not talking to their siblings we open the door for the enemy let's learn to forgive hallelujah the Bible tells us in um, Romans chapter 12 verse 18, it says that so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. 
not so far as it depends on the other person as if it is possible and it is possible as much as lieth in you and you are the one i'm speaking about lies in you make sure that you live peaceable with all men let me add all women so don't wait for somebody to change be ready to forgive it is a pillar for a strong family where there is bitterness there's every kind of evil but where there's forgiveness there's the mercy of god we need to forgive one another and forgiveness it is not something that happens by default it's something you do deliberately somebody said this about love the person said that love is not a feeling love is giving hallelujah what i feel I, I, so i feel that i love this person but this person i don't feel that way i don't mean feeling no. she's a nice person but mean feeling no. you don't have to feel it no. love her as a sister hallelujah where is this when i'm around her i don't feel her give me a wave of inquiries yeah you are the source of a lot of answers and you're also the place where there are a lot of problems and god is with us hallelujah so let us learn to forgive one another as much as it lieth in you don't try to change anybody spouses don't try to change your spouses otherwise you'll be on a frustrating journey those of you who are about to marry don't think that when you marry then the young man will change he will change but he will probably become worse yeah so don't think that when i marry you know the person is not a believer then you go and tell him that you come to church when you come to church you just come come when you come we will start counseling you come he doesn't want to come but you are letting him come then you force him go and see reverend dr quarantine you come you, you don't worry you come you come just come keke he will come keke we'll go and do the wedding ba, 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 ba. but after that he will show you the true colors of his inside hallelujah hallelujah so learn to live peaceably with others learn to have a forgiving spirit at all times church let forgiveness be common in our church let it not be an essential commodity otherwise we cannot have a strong family of god neither can we have strong biological today when you go back if there's a sibling you are not talking to go back and say that in spite of what i have done or you have done i am coming back to you i have forgiven you hallelujah 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 as far as it depends upon us let's learn to forgive um, colossians chapter 3 verse 12 verse 13 it's talking about being kind-hearted not holding things against others not being unforgiving let us we are talking about the pillars of a strong family put on bowels of mercy put on kindness put on humbleness of mind put on uh, uh, forbear with one another and forgive one another if any man has a quarrel against any people have quarrels against each other in the church and in their families they are quarreling seriously some of you that are sitting in, the, in, in, in church this morning the reason why when they were praising God you didn't come forward is that somebody came forward that you are quarreling with the person should you hear or sound so well of course why this work and i'm you see you see i'm talking about he said forgive one another if any man let me add any woman 
has a quarrel against any. As Christ has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. We are talking about the pillars for strong families. Let's learn to forgive one another. In 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 in, in first the same first Peter and chapter three and verse seven, the Bible tells us something. It says, "Let me zoom in to uh, you know husbands and wives." It says, "Likewise, in the same way, husbands." dwell with them according to knowledge hallelujah even and as you give honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being as together of the grace of life that your prayers will not be hindered another important pillar for a strong family is that you know this one says knowledge but we must have understanding of the kind of relationships we have with each other hallelujah you must have understanding that this person i'm living with this is how he is this is how she is and treat the person as such even our children they are not the same you must treat each one of them specially hallelujah we must have understanding 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 i love this verse because it says although it says that the wife is a weaker vessel it just in the next part it says that but she is a joint heir hallelujah hallelujah so the weaker vessel is just a functional thing but in actual fact she's also a joint heir treat her with knowledge treat her with some understanding It's a certain song. I'm not sure it is a Christian song. But a lot of you listen to songs that are not Christian songs. When you come to church, you know, then you behave as if, you know, you and Jesus are twin brothers. I think the song says, treat her like a lady. If you are young, you don't know that song. I don't know the rest of the song so husbands treat your wives like ladies hallelujah when you go out and you are going somewhere don't walk like you are the teacher and she's your student especially the spiritual people i'm going follow me she's your she's your she's your help me hallelujah have understanding treat her with understanding those of you who are about to marry my young people start learning early and learn the good things don't learn the bad things hallelujah hallelujah let there be understanding and i'm going to look i'm going to show you one portion of scripture that tells us something about the kind of relationships we must have let's look in colossians chapter 3 verse 10 to verse 12 i believe colossians chapter 3 and have put on the new man then verse 11 there's neither greek nor jew there's neither circumcised nor uncircumcised that we are all one in Christ there's another portion of scripture that I want to show you about living with understanding and the Bible we, 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 we can see that in um, let's go ahead verse 12 Put on then verse 13 forbearing one another forgiving one another if one has offended the other there's another portion of scripture I'm looking for go to verse 18 wives submit yourself unto your own husbands as is written the Lord let there be understanding hallelujah don't behave as if you are the all in all even if you are earning a higher salary than your husband 
Hallelujah. Otherwise, you are sowing seeds of trouble. We are talking about the pillars of a strong family. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as is fit in the Lord. Hallelujah. Is some wife listening to me? Verse 19. Then husbands, love your wives and don't be bitter against them. That means it's possible for you to be bitter against your wife. Hallelujah. Young married couples in the church. That when somebody does something small to you, you say that I'm walking out of the marriage. You are walking out of the marriage to go where? To go where? Where do you want to go? To your mother's house or to your father's house? Be there and solve the problem. Have understanding. Somebody give me that's why you shouldn't rush to go and marry. My young people. Marriage is not is not a sexual activity. Huh? Marriage is not a question of legalizing sex. You understand? If you are feeling like having sex, you must exercise self-control. My young people. And don't let somebody lure you into marrying the person. Otherwise, you will get later on. Hallelujah. Somebody give me a wave offering. I'll close in a few minutes. Some people are feeling uncomfortable. You will feel even more uncomfortable. <laughs> so, husbands, don't be bitter against them. It means it's possible to be bitter against your wife. It means your wife can do things bitter, bitter, bitter like things. But don't be bitter. When you feel like being bitter, don't be bitter. Young, I'm speaking to young married couples. The older couples right now, there, a lot of you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I want to make sure when I go back and sleep peacefully. <laughs> the younger ones, don't be bitter against your wives. Hallelujah. That is understanding. And then verse 20, he says, Now you children obey your parents in all things. This is well pleasing to the Lord. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Some of us, we still have our parents. Let's be obedient to them. And let me let me extrapolate it to the church. There are some of you here that have got parent figures. Obey them. Hallelujah. I think that it should be possible, pastors, for somebody who may be in a marital, have a marital challenge, when they come and see us, if that person you, you call, hey, papa, grandpapa, uncle, father, if you come and tell him something, if he tells you, obey him. Hallelujah. Don't say that's for this one. Yeah, I can't. Who said you can't? You can't. Children, obey your parents in all things. This is what pleasing unto the Lord. And then it says, Fathers. Oh, this man topic, I like it so much. Provoke not your children to anger. So that they'll be discouraged. Don't discourage your children encourage your children we need an environment of encouragement not only in the church but in our families encourage them if he gets one over ten congratulate him that he got one first before you focus on the nine which he didn't get somebody clapping i'm closing let us build an environment of encouragement in the church you sang three songs two of them you sang them well the third one that time now your throat was suffering so when you meet the person first encourage the, person, the two songs you sang you did very well take a deep breath anyway the third one i saw that it was coming but it wasn't it didn't come very well 
encourage the person in the church your children encourage them if they write an exam and they fail encourage them to write again even if you are here and you have written an exam two times and there has been no third world war still go and write the third time because the bible said that my enemy rejoice not over me when i fall down i rise again even if i fall down seven times i rise up eight times if i fall down eight times i rise up nine times if i fall down nine times i rise up the ten times somebody shout yes hey! we are building strong families hallelujah you went for the interview and it didn't go through hey go and rearrange your papers go again he says no don't go to servants we haven't reached servants we are not talking about servants we are ending over here fathers provoke not your children to anger lest they be discouraged let me tell you one last thing for this morning i'm sure that very soon i will start having a personal podcast so a lot of things that i want to share that i cannot share in 30 minutes i'll be sharing on the podcast so that instead of listening to other podcasts you will listen to podcasts from your own house hallelujah so i'm working on it and i'll be intentional about it because you too you need to hear from your own house drink from your own system another important pillar i'll end there for building strong family is that we must learn to bond with each other hallelujah sometimes we are too in inverted commas spiritual so we don't really know each other hallelujah and we don't know how to support there must be times when we 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 take off this our you know pious dresses we are wearing put on a t-shirt put on some shorts go and have some 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 food together it happened in the bible some of we pastors we are we are we are not real hallelujah we behave as if we always we are not always like this when you see me watching a, a football game and my team is winning and i don't say praise the lord i shall go so let's learn to bond with each other let's learn to bond as a family let's learn to bond even the disciples when the holy spirit came upon them in acts chapter 2 verse 42 they said that they did not only pray they did not also only share fellowship but they broke bread i'm sure when they broke bread peter let me say something too close when you are breaking bread it helps you some people when they are eating no 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 they are making noise it's, ah. so this pastor that he cast out devils when he's eating he makes noise he's also a human being so you can connect to him as a human being hallelujah church let's bond together families let's bond together don't just pay your child's school fees play with him play with her go out to help us have strong families then we will be complete we will be real hallelujah our young people don't know that we are human beings we are not spirits hallelujah they will not be afraid of us as if we are kakai let's learn to bond let's learn to bond let's learn to bond you remember in acts chapter 20 that young man after when paul was preaching and he fell down and he died after paul came and raised him up the bible says in verse 11 that they talked all night they were just chatting all night let's spend some time to chat with each other let's spend some time to get to know about each other better hallelujah to help us to have strong families because this season of your life you will not have it again can you hear me and i believe that as we do that and we remind ourselves of what joshua said to the people of israel that as for me and my house we will serve the lord 
we also learn to pray together as a family come to the family altar call upon God God will hear us as a family he will hear us as his children because the Bible says that it is to him that all prayer will come my, 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 my prayer is that especially during this month walls will be broken relationships will be restored love will be renewed forgiveness will come easy for us and above all we will all learn to serve the lord in jesus name amen thank you for listening to the message visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.